and of course Paul helping squatters being able to live their lives in dignity with plumbing. <coughs> he didn't deserve to get to get to get shot at by some nutcase who was being used as a pawn by the Philadelphia DA. I feel that Paul Shea and company should sue that DA and whoever else is complicit in floating that smear story. Monica, we miss you. We love you. Paul, we are here for you. That I always knew that if I was working with Catherine, something was going to happen. Whatever people thought of it was going to happen. Um, I don't pretend to know what happened to them. I think other people have studied that a lot better than I have. Um, I, um, I don't really know. It's just it's terrifying. Um, they gave us a lot of strength, and I was really hoping that I was going to be able to work with Catherine again on other projects. And so that's a loss. Um, and um, I can remember a few times when Paul gave me a whole lot of courage to do things I never would have thought I was going to do. And I'm going to give it to someone else. Well, just picking up where Seth took off, Catherine gave us a whole lot of courage. I was with her along with Seth. And many, I was with her along with Seth and many others in the ABC Community Center, which was an abandoned school that a whole lot of people in this neighborhood went into in the winter of 89 and 90 as the Dinkins and Koch forces were evicting all the homeless people from the park and they opened up this abandoned school for the second time. It's a long story. Uh, for homeless people to come in and create something um, symbolic and real to put in the face of the system that didn't give a shit about people living in the streets, living in the parks, freezing to death, being in slave-like uh, shelters. And what, when we all went into that building, surrounded by police, okay, we were a motley crew. We were anarchists who had problems with communists. We were people who were detoxing from drugs and were in terrible shape. Uh, we were people who had been brutalized in the subways, who were homeless, who were threat had been very threatening to other people. We, and Catherine was in the center of it. She kept that thing together for a month and a half in the winter, the dead of winter, in 10 degree weather, sleeping in one room. Uh, it was incredible how she kept her head how she was fair to everyone, listened to everyone, and most of all, gave us a kind of vision that we were part of taking a step for a better world on a really broad scale. She gave us that vision that kept people from killing each other in there, raping each other. All kinds of terrible things could have happened because we couldn't get out of that building. We were surrounded by police. And Catherine was like, she was like a light, like a, like looking off into the distance and, you know, seeing a broader perspective. And she could translate that to everyone in there. She was amazing. She was absolutely amazing. And uh, I, I will always think of her like that in that period. And when I would meet her subsequently over the years in the Lower East Side, that, we would always get back to that. We were even still debating points that, that, that took place there years later because it was such a amazingly large experience. At one point, people from the public theater, uh, Kevin Klein and Joe Papp and Tracy Ullman came and were arrested bringing food to, to the ABC Community Center because the cops were trying to starve us out. And people, and George Kuhn and the priest, they all came and they gave food and there were pictures in the newspaper of somebody with a mask, you know, kind of, kind of uh, pulling up the food that was, that was actually red. That was, it just was just incredible. And that leadership, I, there's something I need to say about that that maybe won't be too popular with some folks, but I really think I gotta say this. Catherine was <coughs> political, political to the core, political to the core. You can't really separate her, her, her wonderful, wonderful personality that we loved so much 
was so calming and so listening to others. Can't separate that from her political self, which really was um, a vision that she got juice from when she went to um, Maoist China in the 70s, Jewish Revolutionary China. She was so turned on by that. And she spoke about this a lot that it kind of gave her fuel for the rest of her political life and, and a sense of vision. Now, people have all kinds of different, uh, uh, whatever, feelings or opinions about communist China, but there was certainly something there that turned on a generation of people to, uh, to poss future possibilities. My own opinion is we've got to look at the triumphs and the problems in every society, every revolutionary experience. So she came back and she was still coming out of that space when we were in the ABC Community Center. And she was not alone in what she was doing. That's another thing. I, I, wanted, I want to mention a really um, good example of the kind of thinking I think we should have when we think about Catherine. And that is a time when Nelson Mandela was interviewed by Oprah Winfrey, okay? And he comes out and she is like, lauding him with awe. She's saying, you're the greatest man of the 20th century. You inspired a generation. You are the most courageous person in the world. And Nelson Mandela says to her, wait a minute, I couldn't have done this without a movement. I, I didn't do this by myself. I did not do this by myself. I couldn't have done any of it or survived any of it we were not for a movement. And so I think, I think it's wrong I think it's wrong to see Catherine as just this individual kind of out of the blue. She was influenced by history, by forces in history that were taking place, just as we've all been influenced by what happened in this neighborhood, you know, in the 80s and 90s, and we will never be the same. I know I won't be, because we saw for a while what it was like to win, which most people don't get to see or feel or be part of. And Catherine saw what happened in China, and she also, I'm sure, saw many other things. And my point is that you have to look at a person in their whole uh, context and time and historical forces that helped to create them. Because I think we wouldn't be standing here today if Catherine hadn't gone to China in the 70s. You know, we wouldn't be, because that's part of what created her and why she could give us all that vision. And she was that same person until the end. Even, even after she left the party she had been working with, she did not do that for, because she didn't agree with the vision anymore, she did that for tactical, there were some tactical disagreements as I understand it. But it was not an abandonment of her original vision. And she was that way till the end, and when we would meet, I just saw her about three weeks ago, and we were, you know, still, she was still trying to figure out what was going wrong in the pre what, what was going on in the present political scenario in this country, how it fit into a revolutionary trajectory, what you know, how to how to look at it, how to stage it, how to see what part of it, this whole sequence we were in. She was still trying to figure it out because she believed it's a, it could happen. She believed it's a possibility. And I cannot separate I love her as a human being and we were close from our period in, in the ABC Center, but I could not separate her from that vision, which I think gave us so much. So that's basically what I wanted to say. Thank you, Fran. Thank you, Fran. Catherine Presente.